What is up amigos? Today we're looking at low speed airfoil aerodynamics. And if you don't know about airfoil, check out this video here in our other videos where we look through airfoils. In this one, we're gonna be looking at low speed. So a regular airfoil, let's say it is cambered and it will look somewhat like this. It's actually negative camber, I drew that quite poorly, but anyway, it's still cambered. <laughs> and this is just a regular airfoil. And this will produce some kind of lift, but unfortunately at some point, the flow will definitely separate and will get stalled. We know that. So back in about the 70s, NASA, which is the, um, the successor to the NACA uh, airfoils, designed some new airfoils called low speed ones. And the idea behind these ones was, first of all, can we get a higher lift, just generally speaking, and also can we push this angle higher and then get stalled? So in other words, can we just get better performance? And also can we, if we have CL here and alpha, and also can we also increase the lift to drag ratio and reduce the drag? So that's why I set out to do these low speed airfoils. And what they came up with was something that looks like this. So this is a cambered airfoil and there are a couple of things to note here. The first one is quite obvious. This is the back here, this trailing edge. The bottom surface is like kind of like squashed a little bit to make this little reflex bit. The second thing to note is that the front, even though you can't really see it too much in this diagram, I've tried to draw it well, but anyway, the nose, the leading edge is blunter than this leading edge. What these two things do is one, the flow comes over here and the high pressure that is experienced on this leading edge here and leading edge here is spread over a greater distance now. So that means that the flow doesn't have this impact and it reduces its tendency to stall at higher angles of attack. This little squash bit here, that reflex bit for the, the trailing edge, this also has a very beneficial effect on the stall. So what this does is it allows the airfoil to be loaded a great more at higher angles of attack, which means that we actually do punch this curve further along this way. So the stall angle attack is now a few degrees shifted over here, which is better. Obviously, if you have a, a greater stall angle attack, it means we can push the airfoil higher and get more lift and also have a greater safety margin in terms of when we are just in this general area. So not only does this these two features increase the lift, they also reduce the drag and increase the lift to drag ratio. So let's talk about the naming convention. So as I mentioned, these were uh, done by NASA and they named them LS, the LS series, so the low speed series. And a few different examples are LS10417, LS10409, LS10413. So in these things, you can see that there is a common number here, 04, and then these numbers behind change. So if you looked at our other video on airfoils that I pointed to at the start, you'll know that we have naming conventions like this for airfoils and they're very useful. What is this naming convention, convention here? So let's come over here and let's say we have LS1, X, X, Y, Y. What do the X's stand for and what do the Y's stand for? So the X's, they stand for the amount of lift, so the lift coefficient at, ang at zero degree angle attack. So if we have an LS0417 airfoil, we have the lift coefficient graph here and we have the angle attack here, alpha, and at zero degree angle attack, the lift is 0 0.4, the coefficient. So that's pretty good because that means we know that if we don't have the angle, the airfoil pitched at an angle, we will still produce 0.4 for the coefficient, which is quite good. The second number, this YY, corresponds to the thickness of the airfoil. So 17 means it is 17% thickness to cord ratio. And again, if you've looked at those videos, you know what I mean when I say thickness to cord ratio. The cord is this distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge, and the thickness is that there. So we can know that the thickness, actually to the, okay, so 17%, 9% and 13%. So that is the NASA low speed series and how this is an improvement over irregular airfoils that they produced in the NACA days back in the 30s, 40s and 50s. And what they do, so they increase the lift, they also increase the stall angle and they reduce the drag and increase the lift to drag ratio. So that's in this video. If you'd like to make sure to like it and give it a uh, subscribe. And if you want to get better at this, check out a book by John D. Anderson called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics and also check out our courses in the link in the description for aerodynamics and CFD. And I'll see you next video. Peace, amigos.